How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Internet Culture Podcast. We are here. This is the 10 episode special. We got a big guest today. We got Nuckwit's camera on. We got Sully Brett in the corner. We got Cyril in the chat. And we're playing Rocket League Racing in Fortnite. Uh, you guys might know this game. It's a little bit of an indie game here. Uh, Y'all might not have heard of it. Fortnite. And uh, they got a Rocket League Racing thing. And uh, that's the only thing that we can uh, play because... Uh, Unfortunately, Sully Bread don't have a PC yet. Uh, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting yeah, there. we're getting there though. Yeah. We're getting, we're getting there. But uh, with that being said, we got some pretty interesting topics, and we got a big topic at the end. So make sure to watch the entire video. We're gonna be talking about what you can do right now as a small creator, specifically with some notes on Sully. You guys know that Sully has over a thousand subscribers. I have over twenty thousand. We got Nuckwit that's growing rapidly right now. We got Cyril that's got getting uh, all those streams on the music. So we're gonna talk about our takes on being a creator at our set level as small as we are and how we stay motivated things like that but the biggest first topic that i'd like to talk about in this internet culture is that pokemon po not pokemon pokemon is leaving twitch kind of the point is is that she doesn't have an exclusive deal with twitch anymore which is a big freaking deal because she is literally the entire figurehead for that and Last I just streamer. still on the platform. <laughs> yeah, Last dude. Big streamer. Last big one. To sum up a very large arc of Pokemon's career, uh, she basically lost her exclusive streaming rights, or, or Twitch lost their exclusive streaming rights to her, because they're very much having this idea of, we don't have to sign you, we're Twitch, like you're gonna stream on us either way, type thing. And uh, that's a very interesting take for sure from Twitch, but uh, they lost their biggest guy. And I just want to get uh, your guys' opinions on that real fast. On uh, just the the ethics of what we tied. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. My fault. Uh, but Freaking tragic. Um, <laughs> what, I didn't watch the video. Why did she leave? Like, why, what was her reasoning? So basically what happened is Twitch doesn't like signing exclusive contracts with their biggest creators. And so in this case, they didn't sign with Pokimane because they're moving away from that format. And um, because of that, she's leaving the platform, possibly multi-streaming, possibly not. But her next stream is scheduled on YouTube, which is a mm -hmm. big deal for us YouTube streamers. Um, but yeah, uh, that's that's basic the basics of it. I don't know what your guys' take on that is. I don't know if there is a take to be had on that yet, for real. I, I think looking like to be the end of an era on twitch absolutely uh, i mean twitch the pokemon era over. not just pokemon era twitch in general i mean i feel like you know we've been watching twitch slowly fall apart as uh time's gone on and you know i don't know i feel like this might be the straw that broke that like breaks the camel's back like this might be the it for twitch man and well, i mean and i think obviously like there's still gonna be some people streaming on there but I don't know. It, she she might not stream on there just to uh sort of in in like boycott boycott uh, um what's happening at hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that would make sense. No, I see you dancing, but you're not readying up. I was playing Gangnam Style, dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I actually used to stream on Twitch a while ago, and I wasn't huge or nothing, but I, I was affiliated. And I got, you know, a couple of subscriptions or whatever, but it like took like all my money. So I definitely understand, you know, why everyone's mm -hmm. leaving. Cause that's even me, like I was not making no money. I never got a, any dime from it. But I got some subscriptions and stuff, but you have to have a certain threshold or whatever to hit before you can pay out. So I never got any money, but I got to like, I would have, if they didn't take a bunch of money from me, got like 50 bucks. Hmm. Yeah. I, I've heard about that actually. I've heard that being a major problem is the amount of money you can make on Twitch compared to, I don't know about YouTube. I know compared to Kick, it's like insanely different. <laughs> like, like you make, um, I think you make all of your money. Or they might take like an extremely small percentage, but I know Twitch just kind of kept going up and up and up from where they were when the platform originally uh, grew and got bigger. Yeah, I mean it's it's a huge thing. They're 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 taxing for real. Well, and if you look at and if you look at their um other like because because they're owned by amazon for those who don't know um bought out at one point 
a yes, while ago now. And um, if you look at a... Uh, oh, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> if you look at... The amount of know, profit they're getting? Other, or... Well, well, well uh, they used to, you know, there are other like... What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? <clears throat> One of the big uh, parts about Twitch was the uh, Twitch like gaming rewards, right? Like the, oh yeah, uh, Prime you, Gaming you is gonna be gone. That's that's gonna be something that leaves, bro. The, I, the I, free Prime sub, that's actually mm -hmm. something that might leave the platform. They've talked about that, or and at I, least I it changes. That. That's kind of insane. And so I I thought it was really cool when it was still like you know when Twitch was their own thing running Twitch Prime or when Amazon bought them, but they, then they started they changed the name. So it's actually called um, Amazon Prime Gaming, uh, mm -hmm. Amazon Prime Gaming Rewards or whatever. Well, yeah, because I used Prime to get that gaming. that Fortnite skin from Amazon Prime. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, um, yeah. It, when it was as before, where it was Twitch, and so I think a lot of their stuff is changing. That's a lot less appealing to me. I I don't like. I don't know. I think that um, stuff like that happening years and years is just collectively um, hitting Twitch harder and harder. Yeah, um, I think as like the year goes on too, I think a lot of more changes to Twitch will happen, like they did last year, but on a much larger scale. Because I and also the, used to stream on Twitch too. Streamers are going to be leaving as well with Pokemon not Pokemane not spearheading it. I don't know why I keep saying Pokemon. I know her name is Pokemane, bruh. But uh, yeah, with pe more and more people leaving, it's going to be an interesting uh, scene to be in. Uh, I mean, I think multi-streaming is going to be the wave. For a lot of people the only issue with multi-streaming is that's only accessible to the largest of people i have tried multi-streaming and it just it doesn't work it, it lags up my pc and it's crashed streams for me before and i would i've honestly taken the approach of it's better to um go ahead and stream on one platform than streaming on multiple but for big creators you know they're gonna have two different wi-fi routers set up they're gonna have two oh, different yeah. pcs they're gonna have everything and it's making streaming less accessible to the smaller crowd and more accessible to the larger crowd just like everything which could be a good thing could could be a bad thing i mean ultimately less streamers the less competition i will say that um but also that's bad because small creators are what encompass most of what streaming is Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not necessarily hopping on to watch the newest, um, let's say, XQC stream. But I am going to yeah. hop on to see what Sully Brett's doing, you know, oh, or what yeah. Knuckle's oh, yeah. doing. I'm going to mm -hmm. hop on to see what that is because I actually I've built a relationship. I've been in part of that community because it's a smaller, more accessible community in general. So, well, and that's that's out of the uh, that's out of the creator's hand. But that's like kind of what the price of success is, you know, to a certain you get degree. To that yeah. point, and you got a much larger audience. You got um, you're influencing a lot more people, but you can't build on that one on one connection as much. I think you also just have to try harder. I mean, the only person that I've even seen remotely the same connection is uh, Moist Critical, and uh, that's just because he literally, genuinely checks his chat regularly. Um, what about uh, Jinxie? Jinxie does also check his chat. I've never actually been in a Jinxie stream. Uh, I see mainly clips of him. I don't think mm -hmm. he concur. He averages a lot of concurrence. I think mainly what he makes he his bread and butter is is his clips, because his clips yeah. are good aim. You know. Mhm. Mm um, he's, he's pretty crazy. Yeah. So, with that being said, though, I would like to go to our next topic, which is a, another big topic for, um, I guess, creators as well as just the AI scene in general. Um, the first Neuralink was uh, set for clinical trials. If you don't know what Neuralink is, Neuralink is literally um, a project to cure handicaps, mental handicaps specifically. It is a project set in motion or popularized really by uh, Elon Musk. It's been an idea in, he owns the company, for a yeah. long time and he owns the company that spearheads the research for it. Yeah. But um, it was popularized by him because it's been an idea for a long time. But uh, it basically installs a microchip in your head that uh, will cure your neurological issues. Oh, like Upgrade, the, the Upgrade movie. <laughs> I mean, a lot you like that. Yeah, you never see that movie? I've Good movie, really, really scary though. That, hopefully uh, they don't become killers. 
Yeah, and I mean, the end goal well, we of are. Elon Musk, as stated by Elon Musk, is to create a very fine, like there, there will be no line between artificial intelligence and intelligence. Because his idea behind it is that if we become artificial intelligence, that because we are artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence will not want to destroy us. If that kind of makes sense. Is that actually what he said about it? That is genuinely his thoughts on that. He, he a, basically compares it to humans creating a new building where an anthill is. So if humans are not trying wow. to hurt the anthill by creating a building, but they are hurting the anthill because it's in the way of their, their um, idea or their end goal. And so he says AI in the same way will be programmed to do a task and to do that task, they will have to accidentally kill someone. But if you are integrated within their programming, you will it'll be impossible for you to kill, basically. Yeah, bro, that's insane. <laughs> that's his idea behind it. I don't know. I I'm not gonna lie. I'm I wouldn't compare my intelligence to the level of Elon Musk because he is an ex extremely intelligent man. But it does scare me to death that idea even exists. Yeah, I mean, I'm not letting nobody put. I mean, I understand if it's like a dire measure, you don't really got much you can do about it. You might need that. That might be like your last hope. Mm -hmm. Then I would do it. But like, even then, I would still be cautious about that. Like, I don't think I could ever let someone put something in my head. Yeah, well, I, I agree. I, so at, at least I, for now, it's only for handicapped peoples. Mm -hmm. I, and I think it's good in those cases. In cases of um, even physically handicapped people, I've, I've heard them talk about that too. Uh, you accessing know, parts of their brain to move those other mm -hmm. organ or organs and legs limbs right other yeah moving limbs or, or connecting to a, a, a bionic hand cybernetic right mm -hmm. it's it's really cool um i think that is a really good idea i don't think that perfectly able-bodied human beings getting um pieces of computer equipment lodged into their brains i think that that's not only I, i'm not saying that it won't work but I think that it is immoral. It's a little bit of playing God, it, honestly. It, yeah, it very much is. It I, definitely is. I think when it comes to like mechanical limbs, though, I'm pretty sure, uh, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they they, they said that uh, this was a long time ago, so things might have changed a lot, but like Neuralinks wouldn't be necessary for that because they can connect the uh, motors to the, the nerves in the nervous system that normally trigger when you're trying to like move a limb or something. Yeah. I don't really, I don't, I'm not and like i'm not really educated on that stuff so i i don't really know i have but, heard about uh, that i think yeah. i think Neuralink is kind of like the way that that like they would go about that i think that is the same uh, no, but i think that that is how they would connect it is oh, some oh no i thought you guys yeah, meant yeah. like directly to your brain well but, they uh they actually explored this concept it, in a in a movie that was made in the the mid 2000s called uh spider-man 2 with dr octavius <laughs> never seen it <laughs> i'm sorry i was trying to make it serious <laughs> but it, i i i don't know power of the sun in your oh. the palm of your hand guys i i don't want doc this is what arms, though. that's just me though i don't know oh, say yeah. doc ock oh. three times fast doc you might think doc a little doc. bit different about the <laughs> the movie man <laughs> really eye-opening actually it I truly is doc it doc truly doc is doc one doc. of the movies of all time though spider-man 2 is an movie <laughs> it's a movie of all time man uh <laughs> but anyways uh i think speaking of movies i'd like to roll this into our next topic because we could probably talk about ai all day uh mecha mind 2 got its official <laughs> trailer um and it looks like it's gonna be terrible bro it's gonna be awful man I, the only thing i can compare it to is like an old like disney princess animation from like uh <laughs> Like Disney, like a cartoon, like animated one that like repeats, uh, repeated episodes and stuff. I that's like heavy CGI. That's what it looks like to me. That's really all I can think of. I, I don't know about you guys. If you've seen the trailer, it's pretty horrible. I'll try to link it, the trailer in the description. Yeah, it's funny because like the animation is worse than the original, which came out in like what 2011, 2010. <laughs> yeah, bro, it's, it's not. Insane. Yeah, that's... So it looks like a rush. It looks like a rush project. It's a. It's not like. Can, I mean, if you look at what's going on in it, it's not like. 
like a Kung Fu Panda sequel or like or like something that like plays on things that already happened in the first movie. It's like, okay, we're introducing all these new heroes and villains and they're the new enemies. So, you know, it's, it's not like... Well, I feel like um, Megamind, what they captured there was lightning in a bottle. It was a great cast of voice actors. It was a great script and they can't really recreate that very well, especially in the way, or especially in the way that they're doing it right now. I mean, it's a children's movie children movies are really hard to make good for adults as well megamind still stands today as a good movie for adults and children alike and speaking on those good voice actors that's the biggest punch it's going to take because it doesn't have will ferrell <laughs> doing the voice acting yeah which is I mean, just insane. i think that uh megamind og megamind is definitely a big looks maxer and i think that um these new this new one is definitely goon maxing that's a hundred percent actually that's just true i mean i think we can confirm this even are y'all ready to you know they no, i guess you i guess you, you could say, right now i guess you could say they thought that uh you'd be uh handing over your wallets no oh, yeah it's a cash grab it, it's definitely a cash grab yeah, I mean it's it's also exclusive to Peacock, which means yeah, that it's probably not got a Peacock. large budget. You're not a real Mega Man fan. You, you you didn't understand the reference. No, I, I didn't even. What did you say? <laughs> Hand over your wallets. What what do you think? What do you, what what does he say at the end of the movie, man? Oh, hold on. <laughs> over my head. Over my head. I don't even he know. Says, uh, he says. He says. He went over my mind. Over, he, no, what, is this a crowded room? Is this a crowded room reference? No, it happens in the movie Megamind. I freaking at the end when he becomes the hero. Spoiler alert! It's been out for a while. Oh You're my! Cool. Are you for real, dude? I didn't yeah. know that that's what happened at the end of the movie. Uh, I was waiting for the sequel to come out to watch You can't both. talk about it if you've never seen it. It's not letting me ready up, man. Yeah, that's heck? actually wild. Ready up. Maybe it's the level. I'm gonna switch the level. Huddle jumper. It, it literally. He literally. Um, yeah, what I'm saying, Nuckwit, is I think we're ready for our next topic. Okay. I want to see Titan versus Omni, man. That would be cool. That'd we're going to do a, a bit of a case study here, guys. So um, follow me in this story. It's going to be a little bit of a story. So um, let's say you're a small streamer. And uh, okay. let's say you are uh, obese, okay? Okay. And um, so what I'm you start doing... Streamer. Is you start letting your chat make fun of you for being morbidly obese. Not even they're, they're actually exaggerating that you're obese. Like they're saying you're morbidly obese. Like they can't even walk on the same ground as you. And it creates a lot of hype around you. But you eventually get worried that you're harming a specific community. And that community is a community of people that are also obese but can't control it. Is that ethically and morally okay? And if you haven't figured it out, I'm talking about Queso. <laughs> Me personally, I find the guy extremely entertaining. But while watching one of his streams, I very much so realized that he could be entirely offending a very large crowd in two ways than one. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> in two ways than one. But he could be offending a fun. very large crowd of people. And um, it's all because he allows people to make fun of his weight and it actually succeeds based off of doing so so is it morally okay to yeah. let people make fun of you and and to make fun of someone even if they're okay with you making fun of them because you're still gonna offend someone is my question uh if they encourage that behavior themselves that they're okay with it it should be fine for that person and if someone else is getting offended by that they honestly are. I'm, I I probably am gonna sound like a jerk saying this. It's they need to mind their own business. You know, Ooh, okay. it doesn't it doesn't affect them. But it's imagine not... if okay, so let's say you called someone the word fat. Okay, that is actually yeah. like there's a legitimate population that feels like the word fat is a like nearly a slur for them. Okay, so okay. let's say you call queso fat. Okay. And because you're calling him fat, you're offending a giant group of people. Isn't that right. basically, in, in a, some type of roundabout way, the same as saying a racial slur? 
No. 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 Not at all. That's not at all. No, no, no. No, but that's that's, that's what I'm saying. It's definitely a reach. I'm not saying that I personally believe that. But I am saying that if there was a different situation and someone was instead being made fun of for something other than their weight, is it okay to do so? Listen, so, I, Brody, I think you were cooking up until you got to the... <laughs> That last part, because while I think that it, you're right that it can be offensive, I don't think it's comparable to a racial slur or anything like that. Anyway, you know, um, I I agree. I'm just trying to play the the side of Twitter right now. Like, really? Oh, okay. well, that's, oh, that's, that's your first mistake. mistake. That's your first that's mistake. You're the side of Twitter. <laughs> Every take on Twitter is just un automatically not uh, a fat. You don't, no, 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 no. But if but think about it. If you're if you're fat shaming one person, are you fat shaming everyone? No, no, no. So, so that, that's just, I'm, three, just, I'm just, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm just introducing this argument. This is not necessarily my own argument. It's, it's, I, it's, I actually don't agree with Nuckwit and Sully. Um, you don't? Because, because if you look at Queso's audience, that influ in the influence that he has on others, that's the thing is that whenever, if you're a big streamer, big influencer, if you're big in any, you know, um, any sort of like, uh, I was going to say market, but like, if you're a celebrity, micro celebrity, whatever, your influence you have not only on people but kids. Think about how many kids will watch, like middle schoolers will watch Queso, and they're like, "Oh, my friend's fat. I should like." It's just something that's natural to them. It becomes natural to them because it's something they're so desensitized to watching. So now we're arguing even more so the impact of what he's saying. I, of I doing. think not yeah, necessarily that but, he is allowing it, but the impact that he can have outstretching because he's allowing it right i and i think that's something that has to do with queso not with the viewer i don't think that i think it's something um that are you we mean the, subconsciously you mean the, take in. yeah like, so it's not like, necessarily his fault well n he, well as a streamer it's his own responsibility to know that he is influencing the youth right mm -hmm. i mean you don't go on stream in in you know you might find things funny in your personal life but you know that they're not a good influence to say to other people. You know they're not something you should say in front of an audience. Um, it's I think that's really important to uh, think about in this. So it's like you know what Queso wants to laugh at, and make fun of in his own time is by all means you know I don't care how dark your comedy is, whatever. But but to encourage that within the youth because you know it can be um, you know dangerous when when you have that big of a. Uh, have that big of a following and that big of a influence on on our youth and society i really think that um he should take the role and and know that that's not okay when you choose that life the the life of a streamer the life of an influencer you whatever you are expected you have to know yeah you you are expected to well it's like what you know, happened with sneeko recently i don't know if you guys saw that but he uh there was somebody that came up to uh sneeko and basically started calling they basically started chanting um, anti-gay things to him. Mm. I've not seen oh, well, okay, I didn't know. I really don't know who Queso is, but if he if he has like a children audience, yeah, I would agree with that. I thought I figured he. Had, like, I would say that most people like, on the internet are children, and it, by children like, I mean right, under the age middle of eighteen. And up. Middle schoolers and up, I would say, dominate the internet. Right, that's that's true. Yeah. But I, 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 uh, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised, dude. So I, I mean, recently, of, I have had a lot of experience with elementary school kids, and that's because I have elementary school younger siblings, which is kind of rare for a twenty-year-old to have elementary school siblings still. But I also have thirty-year-old brothers that are older than me, and there's an entirely different mindset between all of them. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them feels a little bit different about things. But I would say without a shadow of a doubt, my older 30-year-old brothers would not watch Queso, and my younger sister would. And, and that's that's really important. I have a younger brother as well. Um, I would also say that my older brothers would not watch, uh, would not watch me, but someone between the ages of 14 and 18 would watch me. Just because, I mean, quite simply, it's a matter of looking up to people normally when you're over the age of about 28 i'd say you start looking for things that are providing you value and information rather than providing you entertainment value and at least in that sort of sense well also 
but I want to bring to light that your your older brothers would have grown up in a different era. That's where definitely true. That wasn't relevant, where there wasn't kids already doing that. Like there there wasn't. I'm assuming when your brothers were older, you know, I mean, they weren't going home and watching YouTubers, right? Like no, they. I weren't. think it's just a generational thing. Would it like uh at what age? So you well, YouTube has been out since 2010 now. So right. my and my brothers both specifically themselves have streamed before. Um, okay, so what it's, age it's are we talking? Is what I was asking. Early 30s. Early 30s, they were. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah, okay. no, they're, they're definitely I in the know about these the entire area. I think there was a different generational thing though, where I don't know that I that think, would apply to everyone. I think the I, moral I really of the story to um, you know? kind of look at what my chat is saying, uh, the members only chat mm -hmm. is saying while this is happening, is uh, Rocky LU in my chat is specifically saying that uh, he wants it to be, Queso would like, he, I, I imagine that Rocky watches Queso a decent bit more than me, um, but he's basically saying that Queso should be basically saying to his audience that you should only target him because he's the streamer and not your friends. And it's yeah, almost his uh, his thing that it. he should do. Uh, uh, let me. I, I'm. I, I was getting it. I was trying to get it. Some. What, okay. So I don't know this queso, and yeah, he probably does have a kid audience. I sort of. There, there's a high. I sort of assume that he didn't have a child audience. I have no idea who he is. Most um, streamers. There, there are there are some streamers that just don't have a children audience. You know, that's it's a thing. Um. So I I, I sort of thought he went into that category, but I also uh, I would I would just say. I mean, yeah, he is, uh, he probably, it, it probably is his response, but I'm not for, like, I don't really like to make fun of people based on their appearance. It's not something I really go for. I mm -hmm. see that there is potential in either hitting or missing in that category. I don't personally, just because I don't find any value in it. But, uh, what I was trying to get at earlier was, uh, you know, uh, even what if the? he, like, took that, took that role model stance where he, uh, is trying to uh only to, like have people target himself and not bully other people the the there's really nothing he could do unless he promoted like anti-bullying things but being a young kid you're gonna get bullied off of a, a lot of different qualities of yourself it's really i i know it's like not something people like to admit or like to hear but it happens regardless of what anyone does again do you, you can promote it you can promote it you can you can try and stop it at the end of the day it's gonna happen no matter what like it happened to me it happened to so many people i knew it's how like that's that's what i knew growing up so it's just i'm speaking from a personal place when mm -hmm. when it comes to like being bullied off of appearance but yeah it's uh, honestly the the reason i uh am kind of just saying that even if he did take a stance it wouldn't matter it's it's because it's just going to happen regardless if he even if he's not doing it someone else will come along and do something similar to that that triggers this whole thing that goes down you know it's it, 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 it the same story kind of happens every 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 generation you know every, everyone goes through it it's just a thing of life i see what you mean knuckwit but there's something i want to add onto that it's do you think do you think promoting that sort of content don't you think that that would be helping that whether whether the whether it's already a problem or not don't you think that i would that would also be making that more relevant and more popular yeah that's the other thing though it's like if his audience is all kids right where where are the where are the parents at you know to like help dictate that you know maybe it, it i might mean be a lot of kids here. don't have relationships it, it with be, their parents might be though funny too here. it might be okay well we're like any guardian role model you know it, it's it's probably their job to you know communicate hey this might be funny here but this isn't something you go around doing in like public or to random people or your friends you know it's not an okay thing it's that's really it's i know uh, the cele like c celebrities e celebrities all that they're not you're they're not really the guardians here they're not the parent parents the parents of the kids are you know in a perfect world i think that's true but um yeah i mean i think about even my childhood i was watching i mean like anytime my parents would leave the room i'm turning on pewdiepie bro like i wasn't allowed to watch pewdiepie every time i, I mean you can't tell me when you were a kid you weren't like you were always like a rule follower right like you were watching oh, no. the things you weren't allowed to watch and you Yo, were I'm not to gonna cap. Really? I did too many sports to actually be doing that stuff. Really? Yeah, my well, parents put uh, me in too many stuff. Brody's too much different. stuff. Brody's different. But I'm I guarantee you, this stuff is beyond those kids' control. And and especially with this newer generation, think about how many of those yeah. kids just grow up sitting on iPads, bro. Their parents cannot control what they what they're always looking at. And yeah, that's that is true. that's a flaw. 
um, in in that whole mindset of iPad kids, but that's a separate it, topic to get into. It, it's but a, I think sorry, because you, you it's like that, sorry, I was in a, a bit of a rant. I think because it's like that, it it falls under the responsibility of the creator, whether they like it or not. When you become yeah. a creator, you have to know, okay, this is what I'm getting myself into. This yeah. is what I'm getting. Every I, job has a responsibility. It's not just. I, I understand you know, that. I understand that, and I'm not saying that creators shouldn't be like that. I think creators should be, but I'm also just saying is that creators are also normal people at the end of the day. Same with kids. And I think the thing with kids, too, is that I won't say it needs to happen, but, like, you know, maybe maybe people should, you know, experience both sides of uh, that, in my opinion, because no matter if you like it a lot, like it or not, a lot of people will be that kind of person, either being the bully of someone or not being the bully of someone. It's happened more times than I can count in my life where, mm -hmm. you know, people think people mess up, people make mistakes, you know, it happens yeah, all the time. Yeah. It happens all the time. And you, both sides end up growing in my opinion, just from my past experiences. Oh, no. But, uh, yeah, it, yeah. I, I don't, I don't agree with like bullying, but you know, I, it, it it's I don't know. It's, it's you're a, saying it's that big... bullying is character development, which to a degree is true, but it, it's, it's bullying a... can also cause a lot of bad things, and that's why overall we should push oh, no, away no, from it, bullying. I know it causes bad things. I'm not saying bullying is okay. I'm I mean I'm trying to get at something no. I like, I get what you're saying. Going through hard times makes you a better person. Going through hard times fundamentally makes you a better person. Yeah, um, I, I get what you're saying. It's also just the the whole thing in general is just a big problem and in also, the world that has been going on for years that no people haven't really figured out how to ace at solving you know mm -hmm. like the adults thing, on the whole thing sorry Sully, one, bad. one thing that i would say too is and i don't know if this even is like a valid point but like there's queso and everyone you know a lot of people watch queso in like middle school and stuff the middle schoolers i've mm -hmm. seen some queso clips i think some of them are funny mm -hmm. and um also though everyone like in middle school i don't know if you guys had it but like where i was from we, there's always that, you know, like Big John or whatever. There's Big John. That's like the mm -hmm. school case, though. And you, like, it's okay to, like, you know, poke fun at Big John, but then you know that, you know, you don't... You don't, you don't do take it too far. You, do. you don't what do what you do to Big John. You don't do that to the other people. And it's kind of like the same thing. It's like, you can maybe say that to Queso because he built himself on that. And so I'm just saying it's probably not too new to these kids you know that are watching it they've already experienced that most likely with big john at their school or whatever or, you're, you know, you're right like that. but right. i think queso might for a lot of kids is also their first experience in that realm and that leads them to end up bullying other kids but i know what you mean by the big john thing like like growing up like i had that one kid you know that was bigger and like was the butt of many jokes and that kid like um you know would joke about it but that but that kid as i grew closer to him also told me that he's like yeah bro like that stuff really gets to me but like i, I hold it in because it's just like you know it's just what i have to do to like yeah. be able to survive which which sucks but i think yeah. i think you are right that there is always a kid that gets that um gets that treatment and um and some and some are very uh, very much able to take it but also some of those kids you know um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very dark tone, but like, um, so like viewer discretion, it's a very dark tone, but you know, I've had, uh, I had a friend when I was younger, you know, he, he was a butt of many jokes like that. He took his own life. Um, cause I think a lot of that, uh, stuff really gets to people, man. And so mm -hmm. it, I, I think it's a bigger deal than we let on, uh, many times. But that being said, you know, I think if you did have, if you did have a friend like that, and, but you still checked up on him and be like, yo, like you're good, right? Like, you know. Uh, I, I think that that's definitely um, I think it's a not, not a horrible thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely. And but I think Queso, not that he should quit making that type of content because that is what he grew up on. I think that he should uh, definitely make some sort of public statement, <laughs> some some sort of statement, just because of how big his audience has gotten, and where his audience like mainly takes place, like you said. So. Yeah. There's definitely a lot that goes into it. I agree. It, it would be a good idea for him to, uh, at some point, put a stop to a little bit of the bullying. Uh, as for now, though, I'd say ultimately what Quesos is Quesos is doing um, is not harmful yet. It hasn't come out that it's harmful yet. 
and it's not necessarily his problem yet. In the future, something comes out that we've found out that a uh, bunch of kids are getting bullied because of specifically Queso. That's an important thing to address. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think uh, we need to touch back up on this in a couple months and see where it's at. Queso might have fallen off by then, let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, it, the internet a is a very interesting place. People might have gotten done with the uh, those fat shaming or joking I ideas entirely. I don't I don't really prescribe to the f necessarily fat shaming word, just mm -hmm. because I think that uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard because I've seen people use fat shaming the wrong way, and I've seen people um, tell someone that they are. Uh, they care about their health and them not understand because they think it's fat shaming. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I'd say we check up in this a couple months. And then um, other than that, we got the next topic, which is a big one. Uh, we want to talk about a couple of things about being a small creator and um, how to navigate that. Talking to Sully Brett, getting Nuckwit's opinion on it, getting my own opinion on it. We're going to talk about everything. We brought Sully Brett here, so I'm going to be addressing these questions to him. But I, we will also put our, our opinions on it as well. So uh, first things first, I want to talk about how long Sully Brett has been making videos. How long have you been making videos, Sully? Um, so my YouTube channel was actually originally created in uh, November 2017. And I started off streaming Fortnite, the game where I'm actually playing right freaking now. It's kind of insane. But um, I was streaming Fortnite to, like, nobody. I kind of didn't really do it much. It was kind of just something to do when I was fun or when I was bored or whatever. So that really never came to nothing, but I always kept the channel. And then a year ago, I would say, I started doing, like, actually trying to take the content stuff serious, but I wasn't super consistent. And about, probably I'd say around late summer, I really started to lock in. And so about five months, I'd say, five, six months, I've really been trying to growing i've been grinding since then i've been working on it so literally about 2017 but seriously i would say about six months so far to a year mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then uh i'd like to also uh address that question in knockaway real fast just a summarized version how long have you been creating content for just uh just somewhat of a date uh 10 years Okay, uh, uh, and then you guys know me. I, I kind of start took off about a year and a half ago when I started streaming consistently, and then I'm. You guys know I'm. I'm always evolving, changing, changing on my format, all that. Every every yeah. time, dude. The crazy thing about YouTube is every time somebody's like, "How long have you been taking it seriously?" Though your answer changes every six months because you've taken it more serious every six months. It's crazy because yeah. like when I first let, let's say uh, January of twenty. 22 is when I started posting regularly. I posted two videos a week, which is a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And then like six months later, I was streaming three times a week and posting two videos a week. And then months after that, I was I was like making sure my streams were 10 hours to 12 hours long and posting twice a, once or twice a week. It was just like every time I feel like it got more serious. So I'm sure that answer, like, it's kind of funny because that answer always feels like it changes for me. And I'm sure it's going to change for you guys as well. Yeah, and then one more thing i like to add with that too is like uh, Nuckwood said, he said about like 10 years. And it's like the same for me too. We had a bunch of old channels. You know, I got a shout out my little brother. Shout out to Jaden. Um, mm -hmm. He probably won't see this, but nah, I'm actually going to make him watch it. But, um, <laughs> you know, we always had a bunch of small channels, you know, like a vlog channel we did one we had one where we did fidget spinner battles we just did a bunch of random stuff it would always be like a summer break or a thanksgiving break mm -hmm. we were like all right let's make a channel and then right when break ended the channel would also end unfortunately so yeah i mean it's always been like a dream or whatever and now now is just the right time to chase it i guess for me at least yeah it's kind of funny uh i also would post so regularly i posted in middle school and um, I don't know if I, I don't really talk about this a lot, but I actually got uh, bullied out of doing it anymore. I posted consistently for probably a span of four or five months. I posted a, a video every week when I was that young. And uh, after a while, somebody, just some people at school found it and started making fun of me for it. And so it's, it's crazy how after a while, you know, the people, the same people that made fun of you are just going to realize, 
oh my gosh, bro, this guy's actually like, you know, he's made it. He's making money. He's have, living a like an actually happy life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. while they're working their job, that pays them nothing. Um, it's it's interesting, and and that they it's not fulfilling and pays them nothing. Not that pay is like the yeah. biggest thing. It's mainly the fulfillment part, you know. I mean, if you can find something that's fulfilling, that's the biggest thing. I mean, yeah, but if you don't feel like that's your purpose and you're just doing it, and you know, you're not having fun, you're not making a bunch of money, and then they see you who they were hating on at the beginning, and now they see you up, you know, it's just that's a different type of hurt right there. It's big. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost like all the bullying that they did is like it drives you even more. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think about that now, like after all this time but dude that back on it. yeah dude that stuff hurt me man oh yeah talking about bullying and all that but uh yeah um after that i, I wanted to ask another question i wanted to ask sully brett and then knuckwit and i'll answer my own question as well or my own question as well uh what is success to you on youtube um i want to be able to motivate uh people you know like we were talking about a lot of uh a lot of what's coming up here is a younger audience and uh, they don't have a lot of guidance, you know, like we're saying with the iPad kids and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, I see it in my family too. Unfortunately, I, I see all my, like my little cousins, they got phones and iPads and stuff. And when I was their age, I was outside, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, they can't have an iPad or whatever, but that's all they do nowadays. So like we were said earlier, they don't got a lot of guidance and uh, me personally, you know, when I did start watching the YouTube, I was blessed enough to find, you know, a YouTuber that had good values and uh, taught things also with the content. And uh, he actually inspired my tattoo that I have. Um, but uh, anyway, who is that's it? Besides the point, uh, I Maverick. He did like Madden videos, but uh, he'll always, you know, put God first and everything, and you know, give praise and everything. So he was a good uh, mentor or whatever coming up. But anyway. Um, basically, I just want to be what he was to me, you know. He showed me a good way, you know. My parents never really took me to church, but he always showed me. While entertaining me at the same time, he was always like, you know, this is also an important thing. You got to be able to grow into a man and stuff. So I want to be able to be, even if it's to a smaller audience, you know, I don't reach as many. If I could change a couple people's lives like that, that would be, you know, that's what motivates me the most. Uh, 100%. Right now, really. But that's in good. five years, the money no, I'm just <laughs> how much money would be would it take to be successful on youtube do you think um i think if i get one dollar off of youtube i'll consider it a success for me personally because like i said it's always been a dream of mine and, you know i make one dollar i can i can still have another job but that means i'm able to you know i'm not doing this for nothing you know what i mean and you know obviously i'm doing it for the other purpose that i said but it's like I can do this and, you know, financially, anything that gives me money, I can financially do this and uh, I'll make something from it. And it's taking a lot of my time, but I'm actually, you know, getting something that I need in return. Because mm -hmm. money, you need it to pay the bills, especially when you get older, obviously, you got to pay the bills and stuff. So if I can get anything from it, I would consider that successful. I don't need millions of dollars. Would I like millions of dollars? Yeah. But I don't need that to be considered successful in my opinion yeah no absolutely yeah i i fully agree money is not a necessarily a uh metric that you can use to describe success it's definitely a secondary thing and um mm -hmm. i feel like i i've been focused on uh money and specifically making it to where i can invest back into my content is the biggest thing uh i i really spend a lot of money on my content so i gotta at least make sure it, it breaks even yeah. or i'm just spending a lot of money on it um but yeah that's definitely a, a good uh a good metric to have for sure just helping people um so yeah what do, what do you think knock uh the, about the whole uh like what success to you on youtube money no i'm just kidding um <laughs> yo there's a little bit of truth uh, in every joke if it's money it's all good no i actually really don't care about the money at all it's never been a factor in it I think uh, if if I'm at least entertaining one person, I, I find I define that as success already. Honestly, that's that's really the only goal I have. Well, consider yourself successful, Knuckle. 
Let's go. For See? Sure. <laughs> so then I could just flex and I'm already successful because I got like one viewer on a video. And you know how much <laughs> I made? Zero dollars. Hey. Eat that freaking uh trying to Jared. make a No, I'm just kidding. I was messing. But yeah, that's about it. Yeah, alright. And then uh my other question is how long do you think it takes to gain that level of success? of that uh, impact on people how long do you think it takes do you think it's something that you can maintain like attain in the next year do you think it's something that you're already currently attaining do you think you're not necessarily having that effect on people to quite the same level that you could um etc um i feel like you know i i wouldn't say hyper successful but i think with that metric of, you know, helping uh, younger kids and helping people find their purpose and stuff and, you know, find faith and whatever. I say I've done that a little bit. So I would say I am half successful or whatever. I don't know the metrics for that. I'm a little <laughs> successful or whatever. <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously, if I could reach a bigger audience, um, which I believe I will, then Yo. that the like just the more people i can reach and help the more successful i consider myself so obviously it takes more time to do that but i don't think there's a certain time frame i would have for me becoming successful in that sense um because even if it's a little bit a little bit of success it's still success to some extent so i've done that already a little bit and uh, but i definitely hope that in the near future i can do it a lot more so hopefully near future i'll just say i guess yeah absolutely i think you can do it for sure um my goal is currently i would like to have i know this is a big big old goal but i'd like to have roughly around five or uh, 50k by uh the end of summer and then um i'd like to have 100k soon like i, I haven't set that goal yet i want to have 100k that's my long-term goal and my uh, short-term goal is 50k subscribers and and not just the subscribers necessarily but the view count to match that level of subscribers uh yeah that's one thing that i i've had to focus on a lot i've talked to everybody about um my uh view count to subscriber rate is sometimes a little bit lower than what i'd like to it to be um uh, and the reason why is because uh you know i post a lot of shorts and i'm not not that I don't appreciate everyone who watches shorts, but I am what's called spreading out my community. So though I have uh, 20k subscribers, you know, I got 15 of those, 15k of those that are subscribed specifically for shorts. I got 2k of those that are specifically subscribed for videos and 2k that are specifically subscribed for, um, you know, live streams. Yeah. yeah, and and that's how it works. Um, the great thing is, is that's the best way to succeed on YouTube right now. A lot of people talk about how that is the, ex the exact way to succeed on YouTube right now is by uh, making your, your videos a variety and uh, attract a large crowd in every platform, not just one. It's literally multi-streaming. We were talking about multi-streaming earlier. That's what I'm doing. I'm multi-streaming, but with my content, I'm doing every type of content, making the, my audience as big as possible. Oh, yeah. But yeah, um... With that being said, there's one last final question, then we're going to wrap up the podcast. It's a little bit of a longer one. It's the 10-episode special, though, so, you know, that's a good thing. Um, the last question is going to be, how do you stay motivated and specifically, like, steer off creator burnout is a big thing. Because you've been consistent, very consistent, for the past four or five months, you know? You've been posting consistently, streaming consistently. How? What's the key to that for you? Um, I was actually talking to my sister earlier today on the phone and she said, uh, Brett, can you just make it big already so I can retire? And, <laughs> you know, she was obviously joking. But I said, Brian, you're like 23 years old. You don't even, you literally just started your new career. She gave me my tattoo. Uh, you literally just started working like your new career a week ago. So you need to chill on the relaxing. But I said, when I get there, I got you for sure. So really, I guess supporting my family and motivating the young uh, people coming up as well. Um, you know, if I'm able to do that, 
I would consider my life a success. Um, and I mean, hey, I don't know how long I'm gonna live, but I know that I will get that done within my time on this earth. Absolutely. Okay. And then uh, Knuckwit, you've been streaming consistently. Uh, it, it's been one day a week, but that's still very consistent for you. I mean, it's a step up from what you were doing. And so uh, yeah. what, what's your idea on that? How, do you, how are you staying consistent in doing uh, that? Do I just, uh, if I'm not enjoying it, uh, I know no one's going to enjoy it. And then if I'm not even like into it, I know I'm not going to enjoy it at all. But so what I've been doing is just trying to find ways to keep myself invested by like, you know, staying happy and enjoying, uh, what I'm doing, you know, mm -hmm. that's making sure you're doing something you enjoy. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Um, that's important too. not going to lie. Mine's going to be entirely different than both your guys' answers. My, mine is just that I force myself to do it because I feel like crap if I don't. <laughs> if I don't do it, if I don't go live, I'm going to feel like garbage. I'm going to feel like I completed nothing for the day. I'm going to feel like I'm f failing myself. Um, that's the biggest thing for me. Uh, it's just genuinely the pressures that I have associated with uh, being on the internet and um, succeeding in my dream. I think to a certain extent that's that's really good, but you know, if it, unless it gets to that crazy part where it's like you can't go without, like when it becomes like you know some sort of an addiction, in mm -hmm. a in a sense, that's that's when it's kind of a problem. But I think that's always good, you know, like to have that for yourself where you keep yourself disciplined. That's something I'm not very great at is self discipline. But you know, when you feel like uh, you know if you don't do this, you're not gonna you're not gonna be yourself. That's definitely that. That's a good thing when you're pursuing a dream that you want to chase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just feel like dog if I don't, don't create that day. And I, I, I think I talked to Cyril about this a little bit, so he might have a more similar to uh, my reaction to things. Uh, Cyril, you're doing the music a little bit different than content creation, but it is fundamentally content creation as well. What's your idea for staying motivated? How do you stay motivated? Well, I would say um, I'm, I think I'm different than most people in the fact that my emotions change very much based on the day. So some days I'm very much like I need to give myself a break, you know, like yeah, today I really need to give myself a break. And then other days I'm like, no, like I got to push through this and this is like, this is my time, bro. Like I got to strike, you know, I got to, I got to get the job done. So, um, there's definitely moments where the creativity is really flowing and I can just get in and like, it's funny cause, um, my most, uh, my most popular song is grown. And, mm -hmm. um, I made that song. So I made that song two separate days, um, two months apart because at first I didn't like it. So like the first, there's actually like a, kind of like a switch you can tell, because for the first, uh, the first time I finished my uh, my vocals on it, I finished about half the song. I didn't really like it, <laughs> or I liked it, but I didn't know I didn't like have the inspiration to rap on that type of thing, you know, like like on that type of beat, the way that that song was portraying. And then one time I was just because a lot of times when I'm in the car to get ideas, I'll just start listening to my own music that I haven't finished yet. I'll be like, oh, I could do this right here, and then I get home and I do it. I was like, oh, like, like literally two months later, I was like, oh, wait, this, like, it's coming together now. And I put it together. I, I uh, mashed together. I showed my friend. He was like, dude, this is crazy. And I was like, okay, bro, I guess I got to release it. And so, um, you know, a, a lot of it comes really quick and it's like on the fly, you get like a shot of creation. But when you're not inspired, um, sometimes I get in there and make myself do it. It just really depends on the moment for me. For sure. I get exactly what you're saying. Sometimes you just gotta force the uh, creativity. There's a there's a famous quote. I forget who it was, but it says, uh, you know, you should never force creativity. But uh, luckily enough for me, my creativity strikes at 9 a.m. each morning. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a good quote. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just getting regimented and um, there, creating a plan. There's actually something else I wanted to mention too. Is is for me? I don't know if this would work in content creation, but to me, um, immersing myself in a different experience. Uh, you know, so like when I made one song, uh, I, I wanted to get a certain emotion across and I couldn't figure out how to do that. 
And I've started like getting like really angry because it just wasn't coming together the way I wanted to. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my creativity wasn't really flowing. And I was like, okay, like I have to have a plan because I want to make music, but my creativity is not coming to me. So what I did was it was like nine o'clock. I turned off all my lights. I opened up the window because it was raining and I just listened to the rain for an hour. And then I went back and made the song and it was like, it's like one of my favorite songs I've ever made. And it's just stuff like that, like to get your creativity going. You gotta immerse yourself in a new experience. Oh my gosh. Did you just. <laughs> <laughs> no way! <laughs> Dude, that's a great no. spot to end it on, bro. Okay, for, for those I that died. don't know or aren't watching, uh, Cyril just uh, killed himself right in front of the finish line, and I just won because he did that. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of the finish line man he respawned and i crossed wa- and he watched it bro that was the funniest thing um, that's could you beat me by point zero seven seconds yeah bro that's great <laughs> all right uh that's a great spot to end the podcast on hopefully you guys enjoyed uh tell us if we should bring sully brett back to the podcast again uh tell us if you like the uh face cams everybody's got their face cams on today except zero he doesn't have a face cam yet but we're we're working on it we're working on it with that being said i will see you beat ups later this was internet culture see you guys